All right, JC, I know you're having a couple questions about TradeNet. I wanted to just go over them very quickly with you just so that you can see what I prefer to do. So with this level two, if you go up here, you can't see it on my screen because I have it blocked off, but I'm going to the configure button over on your top menu. You go to the configure button and you go to your default order. Here's where you want to enter, enter what you want. Uh, your order type possibly by default might be a limit order. I would change it to market. And then you can do whichever share size you prefer. So, you know, if you're at 1,000, the reason I like using 250 is that I can block in 250 share positions and it won't cost me any more money with executions. If I buy 500 shares, it's going to cost me $1.50 and $1.50. If I buy 250 shares twice, it's going to cost me $1.50 and $1.50, roughly. So, you know, if I were to buy 1,000 shares, It'll, it'll just be one order of a thousand shares. It's going to cost me six dollars or I can make it four orders and it's still only going to cost me a dollar fifty per order, which would be six dollars. So for me, that's my mat max risk. Um, yours might be higher, but that's how I, I block into position. So set the share size, uh, set the order type for both of them. Click OK. And then another thing that you want to do, you want to go to the configure and you want to configure your order handle. And from here, I have reset default shares after placement. So you'll see here, say I'm looking at any and I want to go in some odd number, like 312 shares. This is, I could go back to my default position here or if I had a position, it would come up. That's what P and D stand for. But say we're going in for uh, 316 shares. On my order handle, I have it set so that it defaults back to the default position, which is what we just set up, which is 250 shares. So as I go short here, you'll see what comes up here. 250, it goes back to my default size. So I can, I can go ahead and short more it's still gonna say 250, even though I just placed an order for 316 and an order for 250. Um, now, if I have hot buttons, so that say if I want to cover everything, I can either hit my position and and do that, but I like to keep this default at 250 at all times. And then the bottom here, I can cover two thirds of the position. I can cover all of it. So. It's, no matter what this says, I'm going to be covering two thirds of my position of this 566. You'll see cover. I covered two thirds. Now, if I I want to bail out, I you know whether I'm long or short, I can do that because say I'm I'm trying to hit sell all and there's no position to sell because I'm short and I think I'm long. I don't know what to do. I can just hit this bail button and it'll close out the position no matter what. So this is a good button to have. If you don't have these buttons, you just drag this thing, this little bar down. And then you have to assign them based on your hotkeys, which would be in configure hotkey. But going back to this order handle and what we were just talking about. So you want it to reset default shares after placement. So after you place an order, it's gonna go jump right back to your default position which is whatever you want to set it at. And I also set it here for constant shares. The shares don't decline with the execution. So it, it keeps it at the default. And then say you do end up placing a limit order, I want it to reset the default route after placement. So after I place a limit order, say I want to place a limit order to buy here at 201 for 180 shares. After I hit the buy button, it goes right back to my default order. The order type is back to market and 250 shares, even though I have an order out here to buy any at, at 201. Um, one thing to note too, you know, you have the cancel button, but also say I were to buy some shares at, at $2 here for you know 450 shares. 
goes back to the market, goes back to the 250. I have an order out here for 450 shares at two. My bail button also will cancel the order. So not only will it get me out of any of the, the positions that I have that um, I don't have any open right now. And usually this would be configured. Uh, you don't want to show zero share positions. You really don't want to show unrealized or realized. I just do that at the end of the day <clears throat> to see what's going on. This is all you really need to see. Simple shares, average cost. So without taking up any more of your time, the bail button not only gets you out of positions. Let's take a let's take a ten share position on any at six dollars here. Okay. So I'm in any ten shares at two oh six. I also have a buy order here to buy more at two dollars if it comes down. My bail button is going to cancel this order and get me out of the position. Maybe not. Okay, so that time I had to hit it. I had to hit it twice, but <clears throat> um, it's a good button to have especially if you have open orders and something goes against you, it's pretty much a panic button to get out. Um, along with that too, you can order, you can um, adjust the font size if you want to, you can make it bold. I don't really like the font that I have right now, but I do like the color gradient that I have. I have, um, you have to do custom colors. You can't really do enough with these colors. So you go to custom colors, define custom colors. I like blue because it's a cool color, it's easy on the eyes. And what you wanna do is you wanna start somewhere about in the middle and add colors here. Go just a little higher and add. A little higher, add, higher, add, and so on and so forth up until you get as close to white as you want. So now that we have a color bank, you go in here and you adjust colors, start wherever you want to, and you can just fiddle with them. And for me, it makes it a little easier on the eyes. It makes it easier to see these colors. So you kind of have to play around and see what works best for you and your eyes, and then go from there. Um, I already have mine set up. I, I like it enough to, to not really change it. But you do the first three different, and then everything else after that is the same. So you see your first three. This doesn't even have a fourth level. But it allows you to see, you know, in, in faster moving markets with a thicker level two, for me, it allows me to see the levels better, as opposed to um, you know what they give you for for default. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Other than the level two right here, besides the font, since you're not direct routing anything, there's no point to look at the market makers. So I hide those. And I hide that. All I care about is the bid and the price. That's it. Same thing with the time and sales. All I care about is the bid and the price. Um, I'm more of a tape reader, so I don't want a bunch of information. I just want to know exactly what I have. Also here, with the level two, I did a little bit of an adjustment to this bid price to make it easier to read. By default, TradeNet gives you orange. So you have orange, red, green, and dark green. It didn't make sense for me to have orange. What I want is a, a salmon color, a light pink for the bid, and then below the bid is gonna be dark red. So you'll see, okay, these are hitting the bid, and then if a big order comes in markets, it's gonna be bright red, so it'll, it'll show up. The orange and the red were a little bit too close, didn't make any sense to me. Same thing with um, see there they they oversold the bid. 
and then here they bought over the ask. So it just makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, well, I mean, if you have any questions and you ended up finding this video useful, let me know. There's not really too much. If you want some of these uh, hotkey scripts, I can definitely share those with you within Discord. But yeah, that's pretty much it, man. So just like you said, stay green.